So what I'm going to do is I have this card on rollers because as you can see, you, know, you can't see it sideways compared to the other two cars. Uh, so I roll it back here to the store in the winter. So I'm going to kind of roll it into a, a little bit bigger space. Then to get it up, uh, the lease has a couple of really conveniently placed lift points that basically are centered on the center of uh, gravity of the car. So it'll lift up both front and rear uh, on one side at a time. So my process here, and I'll just I'll show you the end result, is to lift up one side, put the front tires under a lamp, a rhino ramp, put it back down, lift up the other side, put the other tire under a rhino ramp, and then I have a bar that attaches or it, it, it uh, mounts to a couple of bolts that I don't remove on the back. I can lift up the entire back end and put jack stands on that bar and then the car is uh, up there pretty stable. So the next thing uh, you'll see is, is the car up. I'll, I'm going to move it around a little bit so it's got a little more space to open the doors and stuff. So I'm actually going to take off the, that both the uh, the, the cover plate and the rear diffuser to get more um, visibility. Um, so the def so those parts actually need to come off before I can use the jack helper because the jack helper uh, attaches to the or secures on the bolts that are securing the diffuser to the car. So first come the lower panels off. Maybe it's a little anal retentive, as they say, but I like to put a piece of cardboard underneath the car right before I take the belly pan off because it's going to fall down and uh, I just don't like it getting scratched by the floor. The diffuser is held on by... Uh, that's 11... These are 8 millimeter uh, bolts. <laughs> And then two larger bolts, the two that the jack help, helper uh, attaches to. So uh, I'm going to take those off. Plotting out the procedure here, and um, unlike the uh, Rover series engines, the 2ZZ, the Toyota engines, shift uh, cables terminate at the top of the transmission. So that's what we're looking at here. So you can see there, that's uh, the, the uh, bracket that holds the cables in place. And then up in front are where the cables actually actuate the transmission. But the problem is that the, they call them R clips. They're the little clips that hold the cable to the end of the uh, the end of the cable rod to the transmission are way buried underneath all these cables. So what I'm going to try and do, you can kind of see one sneaking out right there. See that little gold thing? That's, that's one end, but that's the closer end. The further one is really buried. I don't know, this one, it's going to be tricky. A lot of people have done it, so I'm sure you can do it, but it's quite a little exercise in dexterity and not losing those little R clips. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Let's see if I can get a good shot of this. See that little purple mark right here? That's, that's that back one, and I was actually able to push the uh, R-clip out by reaching, I don't know if you can see, my hand underneath the intake tube. And then the other one, it's just impossible to see in there, but I can feel the R-clip with my finger. I just don't want to push on it right now because uh, if I push on it, it's probably going to fall in the engine and I'm never going to find it again. So I'm going to have to grab a little pair of needle nose and try and pull it out in a way that I can kind of 
Um, there, there, you can see it right there. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a needle nose in here, but I, don't, I have no idea how this is going to go back in. We'll see. Uh, when I'm done, I mean. So, of course, I lost the clip. Uh, so I'm going to try and... So I already took one of the, the C clips out. Uh, these are the these clips that hold on hold the transmission cable onto the bracket. Pretty simple, just pull those out. So the process for releasing the cables up here. I'm doing this a little out of order because I just was curious to see how this would look. Pull this back a little bit. It's hard with one hand, and then get it out. And then I've already got it released on the other end, so you, you just kind of pull it up off of the bracket and, and the cable releases. So I've got this, this one loose already. Um, I'm going to take these off and fish around for that little uh, R clip. Just to go to prove that uh, one of these little magnet things on a stick, very, very helpful friend, found my little R clip. Uh, for some reason, I also lost a washer off the diffuser screw. I don't know how that happened, but uh, that one's easier to re replace. Okay, so uh, the next part, or actually the steps that are described in the uh, manuals are actually to remove the cable from the console side, the shifter side. But, uh, I, like I said, I went out of sequence because I wasn't sure how smoothly that would go. It's not so bad to remove. I have no idea how I'm going to find those holes uh, to go back on, but I guess we'll try it. And... We'll record this just to make sure I have the cable routing accurate. So, here's the bottom of the car. The shift cable that stays on the, I guess that's the... Uh, left side of the car stays on the left side of the car. It runs through cable ties right here. Um, and the left cable is above. And then up in the top, which is dark, let me grab a light here. Here's the cable runs through the cable tie. Uh, you can see the cable tie. This is the uh, transmission drain plug, by the way. And then it stays on, so, so their left cable stays on the left all the way up into the transmission. And the right is at the bottom uh, through the cable tie, but it's on the right all the way back. Um, so the next step is actually to take the console off and remove the cables from uh, inside the car. So I'll do that next and, uh, and we'll be back under here. Now uh, off comes the hard top. Man, that hard top looks good on that car. And then uh, out come the seats and uh, then off comes the console. I'll go into a little more detail on the seats. Uh, hard top for anyone who doesn't have one or hasn't hasn't seen it on the Lotus is uh, held in. This isn't going to show up very well, but it's held in by the same locations as the soft top. There's a uh, recess in, in all four corners, and so on this car, on the hard top, they, there are some brackets that screw in and hold it there. Um, uh, car's actually quieter and more solid feeling with the hardtop on, even though they say it's not structural. So, anyway, off comes the hardtop. The seats in the Elise are, I would say, similar to most car seats, but not exactly the same. So, first of all, can we see it? The uh, bolts that hold the seats into the chassis are uh, Torx, and some of them are pretty buried, hard to get a tool in there, so you have to get an extension and, and, and get it way out here and unscrew it. Um, and they're a little bit hard to, 
hard to get at. And the other thing is if you've never sat in a leaf seat, there's uh, almost no padding. On the plus side, they're super light. So uh, those are coming out next, four bolts each. Uh, one more note, seat belt anchor, uh, bolts to the seat, so I have to take that off. Um, the front, the passenger side front seat, and I, we'll, we'll see if the driver's the same way. Uh, I misspoke, they're not Torx bolts, they're Allen bolts, and the black ones are in the front, silver ones are in the back. I also wanted to point out here that this, little tab holds the shift console down and it is sandwiched between the seat bracket and uh, the floor so you can't get this out without taking the seat out anyway and I think it's the same it is the same on the driver's side so you do have you absolutely have to take the seats out on the driver's uh, seat uh, the one the, the bolt closest to the console in the rear it's a blue screw with this little, uh, I don't know what you call it, I'll call it a bracket because I don't know what else to call it, in that hole. So, and it's oriented in this direction. So uh, you just have to make sure it goes in that same way. My seats, I tilted the front back a little bit. So I have washers underneath the bolts and the bolts are different, but uh, stock, they're the same uh, Allen head bolts that are in the passenger side. One more note, the seat belt has a sensor on it on the driver's side, not on the passenger. Um, there's my two washers that I put under the driver's side. It actually raises the front of the seat a reasonable amount. I felt found it more comfortable. Seats are out. Next step is to remove the console. To do that, I have to take a, there's a screw, grub screw they call it. It's a little Allen uh, headless screw in here. There's a couple of them underneath the uh, handbrake. Then there's a screw in the accessory tray back there that's got to come out. I don't know if, you're, if it's going to be obvious, but uh, I've had most of this stuff off before, and my car is full of little pieces of felt to stop the uh, noises. There's all, there's, Elise's make a, a lot of squeaking and rattling noises. Mine actually doesn't, because every time I find one, I uh, quilch it with, with usually a little felt or, or however I can. Actually, the windows in these cars are pretty rattly, and that's been a lot of work. So anyway, I'm going to take the uh, set screws or grub screws out of the shift knob, and then you spin the shift knob. I'll take the handbrake off, and I'll take the uh, little tray out. One note on a lot of the screws that look like Phillips in this car, they're actually posi uh, drive. Posi drive is a little bit different head. It's got a couple of extra... Uh, features in it and the head is actually a different shape so if you try using a Phillips on a posi head you can but it kind of it is more likely to strip the thread so it's worth going out and getting some uh, posi bits. Once the little plastic tray with the one screw in the top has been removed there's two more screws one here one here and you can pull this out remove this little connector for the cigarette lighter and that piece comes out and now uh, I should just have to take those off and uh, there's one on either side and this console will come off. I also, shift knob's not spinning so I'm going to pull this up a little bit and see what's going on to figure out what I have to do there. The shift knob did spin off, it just it was really hard to do, not like a typical shift knob but it's off so I'm going to take the rest of this console off console tilts up pretty easily with the handbrake up but I wanted to show under here so see the green tab and there's a black one a connector here so you gotta undo those ones for the lock and ones for the hazard and then the shift boot 
is uh, zip tied to the reverse mechanism and I think I have to clip that zip tie and then I'll be able to get the console off. <clears throat> uh, that's the, the gear shift, cross gate, this is that uh, abutment plastic piece that needs to come out and I think this gets reused. I'll make sure handbrake needs to uh, be unclipped. You can, I think that's underneath. Yeah, it's underneath. And then we reuse the, wow, I'll have to get that off. We reuse the micro switch here. Uh, this kind of see the bolts there that hold the uh, mechanism down and then this is the is stands mud see that bolt that isn't there stock and I uh, used a little block of aluminum with some felt on it to not not scratch up the chassis um, and then the cables run through this hole so once this comes off should be able to Get underneath the car, release the uh, uh, attachment underneath the car for the cables, and pull them out. I also thought I'd show the way the reverse lockout mechanism works on the stock system. So you pull up on the collar and see it moves that lever. And when theoretically, when you move it into reverse, you can't get the gate far enough over to get into the reverse side and until you pull up on this it lets that pin by see that and then you can get up into reverse pretty slick and this mechanism really not sloppy at all so you can see there's there's really not much motion in there and I imagine that uh, a lot of the people have problems with this thing. There's probably some play in here. Not on this one. Um, the other thing is that this this attach bolt down here does a huge job in stiffening this thing and holding it to the chassis. You can still see it maybe it still moves a little bit, but it used to rock around a lot. So uh, that's a big difference. I don't know how obvious it is by looking at the lever. You can kind of tell the lever stock actually uh, bends a little bit towards the passenger side. So if the base is straight up and down, the lever is bending a little towards the passenger side. That's stock for Lotus. And I actually uh, at one point was playing with the position of the uh, crossgate cable so I could get it kind of closer over to me. But the reverse lockout actually doesn't doesn't let you go over too far before you, you can't engage reverse anymore. Um, I'm assuming Lotus did that to give you a little more leg room. The uh, you know, kinetic lever, which is right here for comparison, is straight. So um, now the knob is going to be, or the, the lever is going to be straight up. And it's 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 going to be a little closer to the driver. Uh, nobody has complained about having leg room that I've seen, so hopefully that isn't a problem. I I can't imagine that it will be. Um, but I put these two side to side because I wanted to see height wise if they're pretty close, and they're pretty close. I want also there's some uh, interference I guess between the cables and the console when the console goes back in. So I was looking to see why. And it looks like the top cable attaches in about the same place as it does on the InnoKinetic. So I'm not sure why uh, the new one's going to interfere with the console, but well, maybe it's because of that bend. I guess we'll find out when we get it all together. Disconnecting the cables from the shifter. I'm going to try my uh, 11 millimeter. This might be too, too big.
big or too small. Nope, that pops them off. Head screws that hold on the uh, that little plastic bracket that secures the cables. There's two on this side. These aren't sorry. These aren't Phillips. These are Posi. Again, I'm getting some Posi bit because they fit perfectly. And then on the other side. There are a couple of 13 millimeter bolts that uh, are used to hold the handbrake in, so these two take those out. bolts. The handbrake sensor has to come off, so that's these little screws and little tiny bolts on the back side. Um, I think they're posi and five and a half millimeter on the back side, so that comes off. The switch uh, is unscrewed, and it's but its connector is down here and tied on with another zip tie, so I'm going to have to Cut that zip tie and take the um, switch out. Those are very small posi screws and 5.5 millimeter nuts that are holding that guy on. The next step is to take the retaining clip off the emergency brake. So this is the emergency brake, the bottom side. And uh, you can see it's kind of loose. So you got to take that clip off to release the emergency brake cable. Uh, I'm going to try and do that with a pair of pliers, so I'll give it a shot here. So the way this worked, I, I'm, I'm going to do it out of the car because it was actually pretty hard to see. There's a pin, the cable goes through this little clevis in the uh, emergency brake, and then the uh, the tab kind of goes over the pin so it locks it in and then you have to lift this up to get it back off. So sorry that's kind of out of focus but hopefully you get the point. Next step is I'm going to take out that this bolt. That's, that one is to the chassis. That's my uh, stiffener bolt, extra stiffener and then these two bolts at the front. And then remove the uh, wiring harness. There's a uh, some Plastic. Now come over to the passenger side. There are these plastic hooks, and they're open on one end, so like this guy. So they should come. The cable harness should come out as soon as I start lifting this guy, and then I got to figure out how to get the the block to release the cables. Uh, so cables or uh, bolts coming out next. I put a little piece of, so I removed those uh, three bolts, put a little piece of cardboard underneath the console because I could get it up enough to, to get that underneath. Then I yanked on these, got the block, I yanked on, sorry, yanked on these, got the block up, and the block 
appears to be symmetric on either side, so I don't think it matters which way it was in. And then, uh, like I showed, the throttle cable and the cable harness are just held in loosely, or not loosely, they're tight, but um, they're, they're hooked in with those little nylon hooks on the side of the shift console. And uh, so you kind of just turn the whole thing to the side, get fish the fish the cable harness and the throttle cable out, and it comes out pretty easy. Um, so that wasn't so bad actually. So I'm gonna I'm gonna lift the car up uh, and and hold on the jack stands now. Now it's important to note that uh, this car is up. And so if you don't have the wheels chalked, which I have, I have them on Rhino ramps, but I have the front wheels chalked so that the car can't roll forward. Be really, really careful because if this, if, if you lift the car up and it rolls forward off that ramp, it's going into the wall. So uh, just make sure it can't roll anywhere. And there's no emergency brake now, so the rear wheels can roll pretty easily too. So I'm lifting the car up. I'm going to take the uh, shift cables out now.